Look what Pierism just sent me in the mail. It's a birch version of the Librem 5. This is a rather small batch, and it's the first batch that was shipped to customers. First things first, audio. If you're an owner of the Librem 5, you'll notice that the phone is rather silent. If you fiddle around with the GNOME settings, it still won't help. This is because the volume controls aren't linked to any hardware mixers yet. To get audio output working in general, you'll need to install and use Alsa Mixer. So hop on the phone via SSH and install Alsa Util, then run Alsa Mixer and you can adjust the sound level freely. But alarms do go off, as long as the device is powered on and audio is enabled. The date time was messed up when I first got the device, but after adding a SIM card, the clock self-corrected and picked the right time zone. Alright, so the biggest issue with the Librem 5 is definitely the power. In my experience, the Librem 5 can hold or maintain a charge while powered on and plugged in. However, this will not charge the device, at least not within a few weeks. Powered off, this is not an issue although it will get warmed at the touch just charging. With the Librem 5 fully charged and also connected to a charger, it ended up pulling about 205 milliamp hours in just a half hour, which is the total capacity of the phone. So, yeah. If you're okay with a bit less peppiness, you can force the CPU to stay at 1 gigahertz instead of boosting to 1.5 when the phone is busy doing things. It won't help standby time, as in standby it never boosts to 1.5 anyway, but it should increase the duration that you can actively use the device. Although, more testing is needed to know for sure. While working with the device over SSH, I found this command rather helpful to check on the battery status. Here's what the phone looks like while idling. The keyboard feels like a proper smartphone keyboard, although I did see it repeat keys when I forced the CPU to stay at 1 GHz. When the CPU is allowed to boost to 1.5, this does not seem to be an issue. I do miss having input predictions though. One feature I've seen added and removed from Android countless times is the ability to search through your own applications, which is now working just fine on the Librem 5. A big thanks to Nicole and Purism for getting me a working dev kit. The extra time they took to solder on the serial connections was a nice touch. On the Librem 5 Birch, you can receive calls and even hear what the other person is saying, but they cannot hear you. I was also able to make a phone call using the dev kit, but the audio quality was very poor. Sadly, I didn't get a recording of it. As far as reception, it's better than what I'm already getting with my Selfish OS device. With my Sony, I have to step outside my apartment to receive calls or texts. Although, I've only tested the device where I live and where I work. I'm sure results will vary depending on what bands are available where you are. Arguably, one of the most important features is texting which works for the most part. When you go to text somebody new, the GNOME Contacts app never opens. If you open GNOME Contacts manually and add someone, it will show up as an option to text, but selecting them won't work. But if somebody else texts you, it's trivial to reply to them. It works as expected. Another issue is there's no audio played when you receive a text. Overall, the device is a joy to use. It's becoming more and more dependable. I mean, just look at this uptime. But they definitely like to keep their kernels up to date as well. Just for fun, I messed around and installed a couple file browsers, but none of them really seemed usable, so if you want to look at what files you have, the best way is command line. Fortunately, tinkering with apps is simple. You can cleanly install whatever you want and simply remove it if it doesn't work. Messing around in this manner, I found a few games already that have worked really well. 2048 works great. Lights Off is working just fine. And this one has multi-touch input working. Pretty cool. The built-in browser works just fine for basic tasks. If you need to search for a command or research an error, this browser will do just fine. If you want to consume videos, this is not the browser you're looking for. At least not yet. Inevitably, an app will eventually hang, and when they do, you can pop open the Usage app and simply kill whatever's broken. This will even let you kill Fosh itself, although doing so is not recommended. 
One of the bigger issues is the power button. It will lock the screen once the Librem 5 is powered on. But in order to turn on the Librem 5, you have to pop in and out the battery. A software solution should be coming down the road. I also saw a few less critical bugs. The first tap after you unlock a screen brings up the top menu thing. If you disconnect and reconnect from Wi-Fi, sometimes internet takes a while to come back up. Also, the reboot acts like a shutdown. The only thing keeping me from using this as my daily driver is the poor battery performance. I'm sure the bigger battery coming in Chestnut will help, but software improvements will also be needed in order to get this phone through a day. Thanks for watching. Bye.